So when waves start to come towards the beach, um, they start interacting with the bottom of the ocean, and that's what becomes interesting. And when, when most people think of waves, they actually think of the waves that they see when they go to the beach. A lot of people forget that the fact that when you go onto the open ocean, you experience the very same waves that you experience when you go to the beach, if not um, more waves even, because uh, of the rocking of the motion of the ocean. And um, that's what actually causes a lot of people to be sick when they go out in the ocean when they're not used to those waves. But when waves approach the beach is when you get those familiar breakers that everybody knows about. For example, those wonderful, as you can see in the bottom left corner, those wonderful tunnels that uh, surfers so often like to surf. So how do you get something like that? Why do waves collapse as they approach the beach? Now we've already learned about the f what makes the waves uh, size uh, change. And one of the things we, we talked about was the fact that uh, waves need a certain amount of weight to uh, uh, sorry, a certain amount of water underneath them in order to support their weight. So as they get too big, they might get too heavy for their for whatever is underneath them. In other words, it's kind of like having a foundation to support their weight. So one of the obvious reasons why waves collapse as they approach the beach is because as the water gets shallower, it has, there's less water underneath the wave to actually support its weight. But that's actually not the only reason why waves collapse. So as waves approach the ocean, uh, and headed towards the beach, what, what they look like is these long, long um, spaced out spaced out patterns when you have a very long wave period, a very long uh, wavelength, um, and a very uh, long frequency. So you, what, you, what you're talking about is that these waves are far apart. Now, they are also, uh, they extend fairly deep compared to what their wavelength, because typically, like we talked about in a previous video, uh, waves can be felt up to 1.5 times their wavelength. So that means that if you get that distance up there, you multiply by 1.5 times, that's how deep the wave will get. So if the waves are about 30 meters apart, that means that they will be felt 45 meters deep. Now, uh, the wave will start to inter... To inter there is no wave motion below that. You know, their water particles are not moving much. And so that's by the way, why the continental shelf stops being eroded until after a certain depth, because the waves will not touch it. Now, either way, as soon as the wave gets this magical number here, it's called the uh, half uh, wavelength, then a wave starts to change. Now, the waves will actually start to um, to crowd, all right, because they are actually accelerating towards each other and becoming faster and faster. And so, the, we get what is called a crowding zone when the waves actually start to get closer together. Uh, but what's that happening? It's actually, what's happening actually is that they, they seem to be approaching or going towards each other because they're act the ones which are in front are actually going slower and slower. Because as soon as you hit that 0.5, the, beach, the wave starts to touch the bottom. In other, in other words, basically the speed and the wavelength will start to decrease as the waves will start to approach and as the depth of the water increases. Meanwhile, the wave responds by increasing its height. So it's funny because the wave has less support, but it gets higher because of that. And so that's, it's definitely destined to collapse because it won't have enough support to support that height. By the time you get to like one, to the one tenth of the, one twentieth of the wavelength, those waves are completely rubbing against the bottom. And now what starts to happen is that the bottom is moving very little while the top is less obstructed, is moving a lot. So what, what ends up happening is that the bottom, will, f the top will fall off in front of the wave, and that's where you get the breaker collapsing from the wave, and then you even get a return motion on the back of the wave as well. So that explains why waves break when they approach the beach. The waves break as they approach the beach because they touch the bottom and slow down, while the top doesn't, which creates makes the top of the wave collapse forward and sink beneath creating a circulating motion that actually that make, it makes those tunnels uh, and also because they get too high for their for their uh, for their what's never underneath of them to support them another thing so this is what you can see um, for example a breaker system uh, this is like a, on the right side it shows you a beach and it's actually showing the breaker height uh, and it shows you that in this particular beach there's actually six breakers and you can actually see the distance between each of them they mark this as the wave period. Uh, don't get don't get confused by that. This is actually the wavelength, of course, because you can see each breaker. The wave period would be how often one of those waves actually hits you, and the wave the frequency will be how many times per second each wave hits you. So uh, 
I don't want you to get confused because this drawing is technically incorrect because they should have said wavelength. Wave period is how often each wave hits the beach. Uh, so it's a measure of time, not so much the measure of actual distance. Now, either way, the breakers will fall successively more and more as they approach the beach, and some of the waves will actually break several times as they roll towards the beach. And I also wanted to point out, you see here something they call a long short current. It's a current associated with the, with the wave motion as it approaches the beach, and we'll talk about that uh, on the next video. Now, another thing you can see here is a review of what we talked about before, the idea of wave crowding. That will start, it will start to happen as soon as the waves start to hit each other and slow down. Uh, then you get the wave, the increase in the wave height, and the, the energy wave is decreasing because it's touching the bottom, and that's causing the water to be pushed upwards and actually uh, trying to kind of resist that slow down motion of the, of, the, of the friction against the bottom. And eventually you get to the actual area of the surf zone where you get the 1 120th of the wavelength in which the wave is actually collapsing because the front of the wave is moving so much faster than the back of the wave. Now there's actually three types of breaker systems in general. Uh, if the beach is very, very steep, very, very steep, you're gonna see something like this. And the beach is actually, the wave is going to come in so hot and decelerate so fast that the back of the wave actually kind of falls backwards. And so, and so, and so the wave ends up rolling into the beach uh, because of that. So that it actually looks like the wave is rolling kind of backwards as it approaches the beach. Then, if the, it's a moderate steep beach, that's when you get the cool tunnel-like uh, wave motion where the top actually has time to go faster and collapse forward into the beach. When you have something that's very, very steady, like a Florida beach, for example, uh, the wave doesn't actually slow down much and there's not a lot of difference between the top and the bottom, so the wave just kind of, the foam just kind of slides down off the top of the wave, they collide against each other, and they gently come towards the beach and ever so slowly slow down and it's a very gradual process that doesn't actually create the sudden drop that creates the plunging breakers. So you have the spilling breakers where you have a very steady, gradual slowing down. The plunging breakers when they slow down incredibly fast. And then when they slow down even faster and suddenly collapse, you have the surging breakers where the waters just kind of seem to be rolling into the beach. And another thing that's important about all of this is that as the, the beach, as the waves hit the beach, there's actually a reflection pattern and where the water starts from going backwards, which interacts with the coming in breakers. And so this water is trying to get back to the ocean as it, as it hits the beach, because remember, the, uh, there's a circular motion happening here. And so the wave is moving back and forth or rocking because of this circular motion that the molecules are trying to do. And so the, the only way for the water to actually return is to go backwards. You know, to go backwards into the to the beach, and that's what creates a certain backwash that actually ends up taking some of the water and sand from the beach back into the bottom of the ocean. Now, the beach is actually caused by wave motion because a lot of the sand is thrown into the beach because of the wave motion. But this, that same motion, randomly and chaotically, sometimes rarely picks up a little bit of sand, which gets up throwing thrown back into the ocean because of this uh, return current that we call the undertow which is a consequence of the breaker current, which is the, the current of the water being pushed towards the water, the beach, because of the repeating breakers. Now, another thing that will actually happen as the waves approach the beach is something that we called refraction. As the waves approach the beach, they tend to turn and face towards the beach. Because as we know uh, from studying light earlier in the year, when you put a, a pencil inside of water, the light bends as it enters the water because it has to slow down, which is called refraction. The same thing happens to ocean waves. As ocean waves hit the beach, they actually refract towards the beach. Um, and if the beach is actually not too steep and there's enough time for the wave to slow down, it ends up actually little by little uh, inclining away from whatever direction it's going and it ends up hitting the beach in almost a dead-on direction. So because of something like this, you end up getting um, that kind of direct hit that you see here. And you see the same thing happen here in the wave propagation from the open ocean. As you're coming through it, no matter what direction the waves are going, as you approach the shoreline, you're going to have differential uh, refraction matching whatever's happening to the actual shoreline so that in the end, the whole shoreline is almost completely being hit that on. Now, if the beach is steep, you will get 
uh, something more lateral in the in the sense of the thing because you could theoretically get a beach that that's that, where the water is hitting so fast uh, and the steepness is so great that there's not enough time for the water to refract uh, as much as as it would in another kind of beach. Now there's other patterns that happen sometimes as well because as waves hit obstacles they will bend inwards or outwards because of those obstacles. For example, you see this piece of land here is something we would call a headland. It's a piece of land that hasn't eroded as much as other pieces have eroded. This will actually cause a diffraction pattern as well and refract the, 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 the waves away from that, that motion. So even after the waves are already established a, a direction parallel to the beach direction, it will actually refract because of these obstacles that it hits in its way causing new refraction and reflection patterns. Now something else that's causing this to happen by the way is the fact of that ocean breeze that uh, also always breathes, bl uh, blows from the ocean to the land towards the day. So as the waves enter that fetch it actually helps to or reorient the, the waves in a certain direction and since the l uh, ocean current always blows towards the land that also is going to help a new fetch to create new waves in that certain that direction. So it pushes the waves in a current that faces towards the beach. And so when waves hit the shoreline, they both refract and reflect. So they will start to bend because of refraction. And you see that's happening here. The wave crests are becoming bent and bent and refracting more and more as they come through, but they also reflect as they hit the beach. So make sure you understand that both things are happening. And as we talked about, once you reflect, you have to get both construction and destruction of waves because of interactions between different waves now. So some waves will get destructed and flattened, other waves will become even more intense. All of this because of these reflection and refraction patterns which happen as the waves actually hit the shoreline. Now because of these reflection and refraction patterns, you actually end up getting the longshore current, which is a current that moves the water parallel to the actual direction that the beach is hitting uh, because this water that's hitting the beach has to go back somehow. Now since this water is constantly being hit and more and more water is always coming, uh, the only solution is to go back through the undertow that we talked about before and through the longshore current which is a sideways motion as well and we'll talk about that in the next video uh, and lastly uh, as the the, the 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 hits the obstacles i told you that it changes right so for example when a wave hits an island it will it will refract around the island and then after it hits the island that will create actually a convergence pattern on the other side of the island which will either construct or destruct waves depending on the synchronization of the event. So you see that happening over here on the other side of this island, how the, 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 the waves are actually uh, converging on the opposite side of the island, creating a greater wave intensity and all kinds of things here, or wave destruction depending on the specific pattern uh, of the wave. Also, because of those headlands that I talked about before, uh, the, the, you get a, a different differential conversion or refraction of the wave pattern. The headlands usually constitute of harder ground to erode, which means the area right in front of the headlands is usually um, shallower than the area here, which is usually deeper. So the waves here are, are being hit more than the waves up there. So while the waves on the outside will diverge and become weaker and create this pattern of divergence or undulating waves you can, that you can see in the picture at the bottom, in the, in the headland, the, winds, the, the waves will actually converge into the headland and hit it dead on and inc increase the pattern of wave formation. And, and so, in other words, the shallow waters will create waves crests which converge and maximize the impact of waves against the shore, against the headland. Meanwhile, the sandy beach, which is, is coming on already eroded land or land that's actually was softer, actually has the opposite happen. It does, it's going to be a deeper basin and you're going to have a divergent pattern which is going to actually weaken and diverge and minimize the impact of waves against the shore. Which actually winds up happening now is that that rocky headland is under greater pressure which actually might accelerate the erosion and eventually catch it up with the rest of the beach. But since it's harder rock, it's, still, it's going to take a while for that to happen and, and it may not happen if that headland is much, much more tough than the actual surrounding material. The take home point is that as waves approach the beach, there's a lot of things that are going on. The waves are slowing down, the waves are collapsing, the waves are creating breakers, breaker currents, and all sorts of currents. And they're also reflecting and refracting and changing the direction as they hit obstacles and as they hit the bottom and slow down. And so um, 
these wave patterns are going to be permanent as part of, the, of, of what's happening in the beach. All right, on the next video, we're going to talk about currents which happen because of this.